Now, there will be a bunch of new products at CanJam SoCal this year, so this CanJam SoCal preview is a long one. We'd best get right to it. Before I do, though, we want to thank our CanJam SoCal sponsors, Audiohead, Headphone Guru, Hi-Fi Plus, the Los Angeles and Orange County Audio Society, CoBuzz, and Shenzhen Audio for all their support. Now, CoBuzz is not only one of the sponsors, they're the official CanJam Music streaming partner. And Shenzhen Audio is also exhibiting at the show, bringing with them many exciting brands we might not otherwise see on this side of the pond. Fio recently had a huge launch event with many new products revealed. For this CanJam SoCal preview, I'm going to focus mostly on two of those new products just recently launched, the two I've had a chance to actually use, both of which have absolutely thrilled me and both of which put Fio in the conversation when someone's looking for even ultra-high-end portable players and high-end IEMs. Let's start with the new FIO FH7 IEM, which is FIO's new flagship in-ear. And this is an important piece representing not just the best IEM I've heard from FIO so far, but the first one from FIO that I'd say no matter how much you're looking to spend, even if you've got a bulging wallet full of IEM money, you should at least make the FIO FH7 one of the candidates you listen to before you shell out the coin. The FIO FH7 is a hybrid 5-driver in-ear monitor. In each earpiece, the FH7 has one dynamic driver and four balanced armatures. The dynamic driver is a 13.6mm super-large beryllium over polymer driver, and the four balanced armatures are a more advanced configuration that includes Knowles DFK SWFK composite balanced armature drivers, the types you'd expect to find in top-tier IEMs. The shells are CNC machined from aerospace-grade aluminum magnesium alloy, then sandblasted and hand-polished. The FIO FH7 sounds clean, linear, fast, and it's a nice open imaging IEM. The FH7 takes full advantage of the capabilities of the large 13.6mm beryllium plated dynamic driver, and it has bass extension for days. You can both feel and hear it. It's a low bass presence I absolutely love. Extension is one thing, but how much to put in the mix is another, and here FIO showed tremendous self-restraint, tuning a very linear, more flat bass that also shows off the speed of this dynamic driver. If you're looking for fast, extended, more linear bass, you're all set from the get-go with the FH7. In terms of mid-range, the FH7s is also resolving it on the more flat-tuned side, but with enough body to keep it lively. And the FH7's treble is also extended and quite present. It's not bright to my ears, but any more up there, and it might be. On balance, though, the FIO FH7 is outstanding. Again, even if you've got a huge IEM budget burning a hole in your pocket, at least hear the FIO FH7 before you chase the more boutique makers. FIO is also doing something similar with portable digital audio players with their new FIO M11. Truly challenging the very best, exceeding most of them when it comes to features, but also challenging the very, very top tier when it comes to the level of engineering inside. The specifications they published for the M11 are very impressive on paper. I decided to put it on our Audio Precision APX 555 audio analyzer and confirmed they're not exaggerating one bit and even tend to play it conservatively. Theo says the M11 has greater than 115 decibel signal to noise ratio and we confirmed that. They say THD plus noise is less than 0.001% and we're showing it at 0.0009%. They say noise floor is under 6 microvolts and we actually measured it at less than 4.5 microvolts from its unbalanced output, which is very low. So the M11 is obviously quiet enough for sensitive in-ears, but also powerful enough to drive most headphones. And I love, by the way, that the M11 has standard 3.5mm unbalanced, 2.5mm balanced, and 4.4mm Pentacon balanced outputs. The M11 is also very responsive, easily one of the fastest user interfaces on a portable player, probably thanks in part to its Samsung Exynos 7872 6-core processor and 3 gigs of RAM. It also has 32 gigs of internal storage and two micro SD card slots. Some of the great features it has include async USB DAC functionality, USB audio output, SP diff coaxial output, two-way Bluetooth with transmitter support including Aptex HD, LDAC, and LHDC HWA, and receiver support including SBC and LDAC. It also has AirPlay, which I use for my iPhone, iPad, and Mac computers, and it supports DLNA 2. Now you can also transfer music files to and from the M11 using Wi-Fi. On top of all of that, the M11 is beautifully constructed and has a 5.15-inch, 10-point multi-touch 720p screen that takes up most of the front surface of the player. I challenge you to find me another player with the M11's level of engineering and features. Anyway, you should at least check the FIO M11 out, even if you're in the market for the most expensive, most exclusive digital audio players. Dunu is a company whose IEMs are very popular in our community, but whose products I personally only have passing familiarity with, I'm embarrassed to admit. So I was thrilled when this arrived today. This is the Dunu Titan 6 in-ear monitor, and it's an affordable new model from Dunu. Unfortunately, today is our last day of shooting, so I didn't get a lot of time with the Titan 6 to this point, but it makes a good first impression so I'm going out on a limb and saying you should give it a listen at Dunu's exhibit. 
The Dunu Titan 6 uses a single 12.6mm beryllium diaphragm dynamic driver per side. The Titan 6 housings are made from aluminum magnesium alloy, as Dunu describes it, to eliminate harmonic resonance and significantly reduce the distortion. While that might sound like marketing copy, we need to revisit this distortion discussion in just a moment. My first impression is that the Dunu Titan 6's signature favors a richer tone, full bodied through the bass and mids and smoother up top, but with mild sparkle up there. And getting back to that distortion talk, I decided to measure the Dunu Titan 6, and it has crazy low total harmonic distortion and nice impulse response, by the way. After seeing that THD plot, I actually reran another set of Titan 6 measurements to confirm it. Now, with such low distortion, I'm thinking that even if it's not exactly what you're looking for out of the box in terms of tonal balance, though it might be, the Dunu Titan 6 may be a solid platform for EQing to perhaps get the Titan 6 shaped into exactly what you want. So I suggest you spend some time with it at the show. There's been a lot of talk in the industry about the Harman target these last several years based on the work by Sean Olive and his team of researchers at Harman International. Long story short, they set out to find the target frequency response preferred by listeners, the Harman target, and more and more companies are paying attention to that research and voicing their headphones and earphones informed by the research of Sean and his team. One of those companies is Moondrop from China, and they'll be at CanJam SoCal. This is the Moondrop A8, and if you want to hear what the Harman target sounds like, the Moondrop A8 is a great example. The A8 is an 8-driver, all-balanced armature IEM. I first heard it at CanJam Shanghai last year, and it's a beautifully balanced IEM and a great value at the price. Now, as you can see in our measurement of it, the Moondrop A8 actually follows the Harman target very closely. Keep in mind, though, that this is the Harman Around Ear On Ear, or AEOE target. There are actually two Harman targets now, one for Around Ear On Ear headphones and one for more recent research specific to in-ears that's much like the AEOE one, but with about four decibels more bass. It's called the Harman IE target, IE, of course, standing for in-ear. Again, the Moondrop A8 follows the AEOE target more closely, but it's a great window into the sound of Harman's research. By the way, Sean Olive will be presenting his latest research in a seminar at CanJam SoCal, as well as participating in a discussion panel, so make sure not to miss those. Of course, don't miss Moondrop's exhibit either. Astell & Kern launched four new products at Munich High End last month, two new players, the Con Cube, and a new flagship player, the A & Ultima SP2000. The new SP2000 is the first portable player I'm aware of to use AKM's new flagship AK4499 EQ DACs. These have current output architecture, and the SP2000 uses two of them in a dual mono configuration. I haven't heard the A & Ultima SP2000 yet, but a new flagship from Astell & Kern is always something to behold, so I'll be looking for it at CanJam. Astell & Kern also announced the SP1000 Amp that mates with their SP1000 portable players to provide more power output and improve playback time with its own 3700 mAh battery. And finally, they announced a new IEM through their partnership with Biodynamic called the AKT9IE. As a big fan of the AKT8IE, one of the lowest distortion IEMs we've measured by the way, I'm definitely super curious to hear its successor in the new AKT9IE. Of Astell & Kern's new products, the one I have had a chance to spend some time with is the new Astell & Kern Con Cube. The Con Cube, as you can see, is an absolute beast of a digital audio player. Its sheer size pushes the limits of portability, yet I find myself carrying it more often than I ever thought I would. Look at this volume knob. I don't recall seeing anything as substantial on a portable audio player before. This volume knob is so stout, so significant, it seems impossible that all it does is change the volume level. As if turning this has to be affecting something else somewhere in the world. Like every time I turn it, a portcullis on some castle somewhere is opening or closing. Anyway, I love how this control feels. Now I can carry the ConCube in my backpack and use it portably, and it has a reassuring presence on my desk. I didn't think I'd like its form factor as much as I do, but I really, really dig the big Con Cube. The Con Cube is also a beast in terms of its internal architecture using two ES9038 Pro DACs. I don't know of any other portable player that does, and only personally know of one desktop DAC that uses two ES9038 Pros. The Con Cube also outputs up to 12 volts RMS from its balanced output, 6 volts from its unbalanced output, so it's intended to drive just about any headphone. It also has three different gain settings, making the Con Cube a beautiful match with even the most sensitive IEMs. There's no other portable player out there like the Astell & Kern Con Cube. It's a strong performer in a unique form factor I didn't even know I wanted until it arrived. With excellent measured performance, outstanding features, and comparatively affordable pricing, Topping has been doing quite well with our community. Now, these wonderful little desktop DAC headphone amplifier combos are the Topping DX3 Pro and its upmarket sibling, the Topping DX7 Pro. The DX3 Pro is built around two AKM AK4493 DACs, and the DX7 Pro is built around the ESS ES9038 Pro DAC. 
The DX3 Pro and the DX7 Pro were the first topping products I'd used, and they're very impressive performers. And with both, in addition to the usual inputs, they also support Bluetooth digital input with support for Aptex HD. That means I can use my LG V30 Plus Android phone as a wireless transport with these. And I also love that both the DX3 Pro and the DX7 Pro have built-in headphone amplifiers. The DX3 Pro with unbalanced headphone output and the DX7 Pro with both unbalanced and balanced headphone outputs. At CanJam, Topping will also have their D70 DAC. The D70 is built around two of AKM's AK4497 DACs and also uses the AK4118 receiver, which Topping says is one of the lowest jitter SPDIF receivers available today. It also has a long list of other audiophile grade components inside, fancy bits and pieces I wouldn't expect at its affordable price. Of course, all of that would mean very little if it didn't all coalesce into a DAC that performs well, and I'm happy to report that Topping D70 both sounds and measures great. The Topping D70 is a resolving DAC and a joy to listen to, and putting it on the Audio Precision Analyzer for preliminary measurements shows a DAC that lives up to Topping's growing reputation. In fact, I think the THD plus noise I measured is actually better than Topping's published specs for the D70. The Topping D70 is also flexible with AES, USB, optical, coaxial, and I2SLVDS SLVDS digital inputs. Outputs include XLR and RCA, and you can output to either or both of those for greater flexibility and usage in multiple systems. The D70 can also be used as a DAC or preamp with an internal volume control adjustable from minus 99 decibels to zero decibels, and that volume control function can also be shut off to run at max output for DAC-only functionality. Simply put, Topping seems intent on giving us more DAC performance and functionality than we'd expect at the prices they charge, and they obviously deliver. Shozi will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal at the Source AV's exhibit. The Source AV is perhaps better known as TSAV, a Torrance, California audio dealer who is very well known and well regarded with head fires. Shozi will be showing their new Shozi Pola 39 in-ear monitor, which while not replacing the original Shozi Pola as I understand it, represents to my ears a clear improvement to it. The Pola 39 is Shozi's second generation design and uses a new venting system and a new stainless steel nozzle. I'm told there's also a 3D printed waveguide inside and the electrostatic drivers are placed near the nozzle for higher SPL from them. The dynamic driver is also much faster and lighter than the first generation Polas. With its second generation design, the Pola 39 presents quite a bit more high frequency energy than the original Pola. I feel like I'm hearing the electrostatic drivers much more clearly than with the original Pola. Also, overall, the tuning is more coherent, clarity improved across the board, image objects are better fleshed out, edges more defined. If you're a fan of Shozi's original Pola, I feel very confident you'll find the new Pola 39 the stronger, more refined evolution of Shozi's vision and voicing. Again, make sure to stop by TSAV's exhibit at CanJam to hear the Shozi Pola 39. And speaking of TSAV, they'll have a lot more gear in addition to Shozi. Again, TSAV is a popular SoCal audio dealer that also strongly specializes in high-end headphone audio. So at the show, TSAV will have a wide variety of audio gear to audition. At CanJam SoCal, TSAV's exhibit has always been like a show within a show. Matrix Audio from Shenzhen, China has developed some of my favorite DACs lately. At CanJam Singapore last March, Matrix unveiled two outstanding new streaming DAC amp combos, and they'll have them both at CanJam SoCal. Now, my favorite Matrix product is easily their new flagship. This is the Matrix Audio Element X streamer DAC and headphone amp. The Element X has an ARM quad-core CPU and a plethora of inputs, as well as connectivity via Wi-Fi and 10100 Ethernet. The Element X's DAC section is built around the ES9038 Pro DAC with the ES9311 Low Noise Low Dropout Regulator and the Crystec CCHD950 femtosecond clock. As for headphone outputs, the Element X has balanced headphone outputs via dual 3-pin XLR and 4-pin XLR, and that's in addition to a quarter-inch unbalanced output. Particularly brilliant is the Element X's volume control. It brings the audio quality advantages of an analog volume together with the precision of a digital one. It uses an array of relays along with the built-in DAC chip's internal digital volume. So every 20 decibels of volume change, you'll hear a click from the relays when it changes analog attenuation. In between that, it's digital attenuation. So for example, if you went down minus 20.5 decibels from one of the clicks, you're at minus 20 decibels of analog attenuation and minus 0.5 decibels of digital attenuation. It uses this system to provide a wide volume control range, and I love it. Just before CanJam Singapore, I did some quick measurements of the Matrix Element X, and it turned in some of the best measurements from a DAC that we've ever seen on the Audio Precision APX 555 audio analyzer. Very low distortion, very low noise. I use the most sensitive IEMs with it, yet I can also drive just about any full-sized over-ear with up to 1,700 milliwatts into 33 ohms. The Matrix Element X is awesome, and one of our reference DAC amps here at the office now. 
Now, if the element X is out of your price range, Matrix will also have their new element M, which is built around the ES9028 Pro DAC and has a single-ended headphone output only. Still, for its significantly lower price, the Element M Streamer DAC Amp Combo brings so much of what I love about the Element X in a smaller, more affordable package. Again, CanJam SoCal is happening June 22nd and 23rd, 2019 at the Irvine Marriott Hotel in Orange County, California. Of course, we didn't have time to cover every exhibitor, so scrolling on your screen now is a list of all the companies who will be exhibiting at CanJam SoCal this year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in SoCal and on the forums at headfi.org.